sport. We're discussing rallying. The Irish Tarmac Championship is back and the Galway International this weekend is going to kick things off. Uh, Killian Duffy on the personal joins us to, to look ahead to the event. Killian, good to see you. Good to talk to you. Yeah, good to be back, Ocean. Good to be talk, back talking yeah. rallying again. Yeah, it's brilliant to be back talking rallying and it's brilliant that Galway, the traditional start, is kicking things off and they've reverted to a two-day event again, Killian. So it's going to be a a hectic and busy weekend, but it's it's what rallying's all about. Yeah, I actually can't remember the last uh, two day event pre COVID. Um, obviously Cork Twenty ran last year in the Harvest, and they were like uh, single day events. I can't remember when the last two day event. It possibly was Cork Twenty Twenty Nineteen, um, since there was a two day event. So it's great to see it back. Great to see tough, challenging Galway stages lying ahead. Three stages ran three times on Saturday. Real greasy stages. Real dry stone wall. Uh, Saturday stages, then the Sunday stages is uh, the famous Brady's Yard and Black Road. Um, Brady's Yard is a bit slippy in places, uh, but generally it's a very big commitment stage. And then the Black Road is a real, real committed stage across uh, across the mountain. So it's going to sort everyone out. Plenty of stages for racing. And it's nice even for ourselves doing the Facebook Live or even crews just that they have a day of rally and then they're staying there and then they do another day. So I like, guess it's almost a novelty at this stage. I mean, we're nearly reprogrammed because of COVID into two stages, three times, six stages in total. So it'll be nice to get a, you know, a decent bit of kilometres under their belt and uh, as I said, day two, and it'll it'll make it interesting for sure. Yeah. What's the general feeling on the ground, uh, Killian? Because you, of course, know all these drivers and co-drivers very, very well. And what's the talk pre-Galway? Uh, well, the talk is, I suppose, um, anyone I've spoke to that's done the recce has really spoke about stage two in Galway. It's extremely uh, tricky. It would have been used in the opposite direction in the Galway summer and also Galway International over the years. Um, every corner looks the exact same. A lot of late corners, a lot of corners that tighten um, just at the end or half tighten at the end. Nips is what I would call it. Um, so that's going to be that's going to be a bit tricky. Uh, but again, everyone was saying it is what it is. It's Galway. You can't expect anything else. It's slimy. It's slippy, particularly on the Saturday. And then it's more, we'll say, more better grip on the Sunday. But everyone's talking about the Saturday stage, and particularly stage number two. So I would say that that could be the stage that will throw up a few surprises. Yep. And as expected, all the big guns are on the entry list. All the well-known names are an Irish rally and are, are, are there to get back into the seats again. Yeah, it's great to see people. I mean, uh, Declan Boyle is obviously going in his uh, WRC car. I think that's in preparation for the big event there up with yourselves in June. Uh, so he's getting ready early. Uh, then the R5 battle. I mean, unfortunately, Matt Edwards didn't get the budget together. He's the current British rally champion. Would have been great to see him come uh, coming over um, because his, his speed is stunning. Uh, but nonetheless, we have a return on Alistair Fisher, um, who was the last winner of Gold International back in um, 2020. Um, he's in Apollo. Everyone that seems to be in Apollo seems to go well. Uh, Calvin Devine then, of course, he had a great uh, year last year, or a short year, we'll call it, but he won Cork and um, the Harvest um, along with another event. But um, it's going to be a good race. I mean, Alistair Fisher never did a huge amount of rallying in a season anywhere, and he seems to be able to just sit into the car and go. Um, so I think if I was picking a favourite, it'll probably be between the two lads. Um, I might just give a bit more of a nod to Alistair there. I just think that... It's going to be a good race. I just feel like Callum had a, he, although he went well last year, I think he, he was playing around suspensions in the Ulster and he sort of dropped his head a little bit. So I think it's going to take him a few stages to get his confidence back. Um, but again, Alistair, I, I've never seen him starting slow or not being on the pace straight away. Um, but it's certainly it's not going to be huge margins between them. So it'll make for great racing. And of course, I'm only talking about them too. Um, you know, you have Marion Evans there. Is a, you know he was fastest uh, back in 2020 on the first stage in Galway. I'm really sure, um, you know, and he can't be discounted. He's um, more I won't say slow and steady, far from slow, um, a more steady approach, uh, but he's very very consistent. And uh, then you look back, Josh Moffat, Johnny Greer, Raina Northern Ireland champion, Can McCourt, Donna Kelly, of course, like Donna, okay. Again, he hasn't been out in a couple of years because of COVID as well. As such, I know he was in Clarny Historics in his M3 and that. But again, it's a different kettle of fish in the, in the polo. Uh, Declan Boyle, of course, Gary Jennings, then Daniel Cronin's in a polo. So it's mouthwatering. And then you have Tim McNulty, who's a former national tarmac champion, is in a right-hand drive R5 Fiesta. And he hasn't been out in seven or eight years. And it's great to see him back. And I understand he has a lot of testing done for the event. So... Of all the people on the entry list, from what I'm hearing, and this is only rumour, it wasn't what Tim had told me, that he could have more kilometres done than anyone else in, up the field in front of him. So 
I mean, you can't can't uh, discount them, but it's it's going to be truly interesting. I mean, I think Galway always has this mystique about it. You know, it's like a new season for any sport or like Formula One or rally in a world championship. You can't beat the first round because you're wondering how people will go, particularly in new cars. And of course, then it is very important behind the R5 is the modified uh, field. And that's mouthwater. And I mean, you've Kevin Eves, uh, Kevin seems to generally, Kevin and Gary Kernan seem to be almost slow starters. And then but you have Damien Torres. Damien always revels in them slippy conditions. He'll go really, really well. Declan Galler was coming on form in Killarney Historics as well. Wouldn't discount him. He goes really well in Gola. James Stafford then is making the trip from Wexford. Uh, of all events, I would say this would be his least favourite um, because of the grip with the Darien. Um, you know, the front end of them cars are so light with the engine in the back. So, I mean, again, I wouldn't discount him, but he's going to, I would say, struggle a bit for grip and call it Chris Armstrong, Damien Toner, and then, of course, Jason Black and the Starlet. So, I mean, where do you end? I could go back yeah. through the whole entry list and there's going to be racing in all the classes. Uh, it's just going to be brilliant. There hasn't been many dropouts. I was talking to Aidan Conley, the COC there, just before I came on uh, with yourself. And there hasn't been really any other notable dropouts other than uh, Matt Edwards and everyone else's. You know, I see videos of people testing and getting warmed up and the junior side of things. I mean, there's so many categories and classes to look forward to where it's like we rewound and went back to 2005 2006 where irish rallying was at its peak in modern times and it seems like that way again and again i think the push is on to get these right and drive fiesta uh, not fiestas right and drive cars or five cars allowed to win international rallies again that's gonna i'm hearing there's a good few new cars bought with guys that are going to put them in right and drive and do the rest of the tarmac. So hopefully that will have change for, for West Cork. Yeah, yeah. As, as you were rattling through those names in cars, Killian, I was thinking the exact same thing. It's a very impressive list and it's been a long time since we had such quality in an international field. Um, and you go back to that period where like the top 20 in Donegal was, was all WRC cars. But you're looking here now at, at the, the seated entry list for, for Galway. The top 25 cars are all the top type car that you can run in the country at at, at the moment. And it, it hasn't taken that long for these R5 cars, for the Polos and the Fiestas, all to filter through. And, and I suppose making a big statement in Irish rallying again, Killian. It is. It just goes to show, I mean, it, like it, the probably the argument for it is that some of these R5 cars, the earlier versions, are probably around the same price as a modified Escort at this stage. Um, so I suppose the newer version car is sort of a good idea, the running cost of it. So they're, dare I say they're getting more affordable to those that can afford them. Um, and it's just equal racing. I mean, no one has a big advantage over the other person. So the fastest person's um, going to win. Obviously, they come from a factory. So there's, you're sort of tied with the modifications you can do. Mostly it's your setup and stuff you'd be changing. Um, but it's like it's going to be super racing. I mean, at the end of the first stage, I would say even taking stage times for us broadcasting will be busy because you'd be. I don't imagine there's going to be massive margins. There might be slight gaps as you go back the field, but it's it's not going to be massive. Like and again, same as the same as the modified. So you won't get it better anywhere, to be honest. Like that amount of like you've over twenty or fives, as you said, they're fantastic to watch. They're going to be pushed to the limit, and then you're then you start with them and you you've enjoyed them, and then all of a sudden the top modified guys that. Let's be honest, Mick O'Hervin and Kem here, Craig Breen came, you know, in a modified car and no one was able to beat these guys. Like, they're just on a different level of, of uh, lunatics, I suppose. You know, these guys in the modified cars, like, I'm sure they're going to be racing up with some of the R5 cars as well, if not a good few of them. Um, but it, it's always truly entertaining, you know, because the, they're obviously not just uh, stuck to the road like the R5s. There's a bit more uh, action, and particularly in the slippy conditions, so... So much to look forward to, and I'm, I, I would say, like, any of the rallies I was at last year, Cork, Donegal Harvest, like, I haven't seen crowds at rallies. I can't remember when uh, that i seen at the Donegal Harvest, and it was a miserable day. It was lashing rain, and all you could see was six, seven people deep at the stages, and it's just, hopefully this is a bit of a sweet spot for rallying that we can, you know, that is, you know, promoted and pushed, and people are enjoying it, and I think that some people come back to rallying during COVID that probably realised, you know what, I actually miss the social side of it, I miss the competitive side of it. People going out watching and stuff, they just miss that, going out and hearing the sound of the car coming in the distance, you know, and just seeing what, what appears and, and what the difference in times are. So lots to look forward to. Yeah. Must stand in a field getting soaking wet, Killian. I know, and that'll be this weekend. I think I think the weather the weather is due to be bad this weekend. So yeah. it's gonna I think that'll definitely be the case. Like I'm I'm just thinking as well, 
this is Galway's entry. Imagine what Donny Gall is going to be like come the third weekend in June. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Like I, I was thinking, we we're talking offline before we come yeah. on. Will anyone appear in one of these uh, new generation cars in Donny Gall? Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see like how many world cars is uh, Declan Boyle has sort of put his colours to the mass now. He's coming in the world car, so he is obviously probably going to do the national championship, I would imagine. And he'd be getting revved up for, for Donegal. And let's not forget when Craig Bean was here, like Declan was leading after day one, and there's a man that was on the podium in Monty. Now, I'm not saying Declan Boyle, if he went to Monty last week, he'd be on the podium. Um, obviously, Craig goes well, really well everywhere. But the, the local talent on the local roads here, being local and as all the Irish roads, these guys are as, as good as it gets. Like, And there's no big difference between them and anyone else that will be driving down the road. So the spectacle they're putting on for spectators and the sheer volume of cars and variety is just... Um, is super and I think it'll be a great great event and as you say it'll be it'll be hype up till June for Donegal everything about Donegal so uh, yeah it's, it's going to be great and I think Donegal is back to three or is it three days and yeah. and I think Ian McGee as well on the case with the organising there so it's got hopefully fingers crossed it's a great year yeah a lot of rallying to take place between now and then listen Killian as always it's good to talk to you so it is enjoy, enjoy the rallying at the weekend hope you don't get too wet no, I'll be thinking of you, Oshin. You'll be a bit sunnier when I meet you at the end of the stages in uh, Donegal in June. Look after yourself. Yeah, okay. Take care. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye.